What's a billion dollars to the Abisha? What's a billion? What's a garnished? It's not a it's not like toss wow, a billion dollars. You can win it tonight. You can win it tonight. It's a joke. It's garnished. It's not it ain't safe. It's not infinity. What, like the question. What is one to infinity or a billion to infinity? Is there a difference between one to infinity or a billion to infinity? It's the same number. It's no difference. To eight ain't safe to, to, to an infinite thing ain't safe. There's a billion dollars. And a dollar is a zelbazach. A billion dollars in a dream and a dollar's in a dream. It's the same thing. It's nothing. It's garnished. To the Abish, to a billion dollars is, is like a dollar. Ten billion dollars, like, ain't it safe? I'll take the billion. Because <laughs> you're not Aiden Saif. Because you and I, I'll take the billion too. You'll be, you'll be happy. Because I'm not Aiden Saif. You will be happy. I'm an Aiden in a vessel. No, that proves, that proves that I'm a vessel. I'm a, and that's a problem. Most people who give them, most people who give them a billion dollars, they have Shvita Sakalim. They destroy them. It, trust me, whoever's going to win that billion dollars, destroy his life. True. Nobody should win that billion dollars. They should, they should, they should divide it into hundreds of people, yeah, that billion dollars. Yeah. Because it's, it's, it's going to destroy people's lives. It's not going to be good for anybody to win a billion dollars. That's it. I, Nobody wants to. I'm going to try. You gonna, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to try too. I'm going to try too, but I'm going to give a lot away. Give it a, a, a 90% course. away. Give it to the doctor. We're going to do it a billion dollars. Because even, even that light is, a li is too much for to a to, Even though it's limited. It's limited. A billion dollars is limited. Well, can we have two billion dollars? What's, what's a, if I have a billion, as the Gemara says, a person that has a hundred wants automatically two hundred. Right. If you have two hundred, you want automatically four hundred. Uh -huh. We all we want automatically more. That's the that's the way it is. So now we have to look for a higher thing than Eirin Seif. We have to look for something that's higher than Eirin Seif. Because Achaydash Hazelachem is the connection of Eirin Seif and Eir in a, in a vessel. Bereish's bottle of Kim comes to unite something higher than Eir and Saif. What is it? And that's Atzmus. That's the uh, that's the Abishtim. Atzmut Samuzai. The Abishtim himself, God himself. And that's higher than even Eir and Saif. That's Atzmus. Atzmus okay. Samuzai. The Abishtim, the essence of God. We're not looking for Eiris anymore. So, right, I just told you, even I called Eir and Saif an infinite light. When you say something's infinite, then that means it's not finite. You say something finite, it means it's not infinite. So even Eir ain't safe, an infinite has already a darga, has already a, has a limitation. I'm not looking for Eir ain't safe. I am looking for a higher concept, and that's Asmus Mahushesh Al Kodesh Baruch Hu. I'm looking for the essence of our, the Abishta. And that's what Moshe Rabbeinu says to God. I'm not looking for Shema Vaya. You're telling me, oh, Shema Vaya, Shema Vaya, Shema Vaya. Wonderful. It's a great, great concept. The, the, you didn't even tell that the others. You didn't even reveal that to the others, to the patriarchs. Uh, but I'm not looking for that. I'm looking for Atmos Mulpanaya. I'm looking for Priyaka Jbarcha. I'm looking for the face of the Ebishta. That's, uh, that's Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, he's not looking for Oedis. Moshe Rabbeinu is looking for Atmos. He's looking to see God. I don't want to see your lights, your, your manifestations, your greatness. I don't want to see that. I want to see you. And the Abish says, Upon <laughs> He says, Great, great, uh, great idea, but uh, that's not going to happen. That's a problem. That, right. you gotta, that, that you cannot see. But that has to be the yearning of a yid. Why did the Torah tell us that Mesh Rabbeinu wanted that? Because that's the yearning of a yid. That should be the yearning of a Jew. That he doesn't want to have Oedis, he wants a Vatsmus. To see God. To see God. To face? face to face. Wow. Moshe Rabbeinu wanted to see that, and so too we want to see but that. He doesn't love we, to see it. I know we don't love it. says he can't see it. But that needs to be the yearning. The yearning of a Yid is to see Atmos, which is the truth is that's why we yearn for the Beis HaMikdash, because we saw Atmos in the Beis HaMikdash. That's the greatness of the Beis HaMikdash, that we saw Atmos Shashadak al Baruch, we saw something that's even the Maile Ma'edis, above Oedis. We saw Atmos. And the did, God did give that to Am Yisrael. Through Meish Rabbeinu. That's the first thing after Matan Teda. The Abish tells Meish Rabbeinu to build the Mishkan, where you're going to see Atmos. So, so he did see him. Yeah. Yeah, in, in a certain Mishkan. way. In the Mishkan. But it was ultimately Malbush in a vessel. Oh, it came into, into an Oren. Right. He came into the Oren where they saw Atmos. So it ultimately came into a vessel. And therefore, it was, it was Malavish Bekeli, which that's the greatness. The greatness is that the vessel doesn't, doesn't nullify itself 
even though you have the essence of God there. And that's only God can do. That the Abish, the God, Atzmusa, should come into a vessel and it doesn't break. So that's why the Abish says, I'm gonna build a big, big, I'm gonna build a big, gonna build a beautiful Mishkan. You're gonna have there many things. But where are you gonna hear the Abishta? Where are you gonna hear God's voice from? Everything is so precise. Right? Here. They, can they, uh, the, the question the Shlema Melech asks is that can you, can you, can you, can you fit in a, in, a, in a building? What do you mean? I build a building. Can you take Atzmus and Moses and put it in a building? And God says not only you can take Atzmus and put it in a building, but it's actually in this building. It's going to be in a very, very precise place. Between the two cherubim, right over this, uh, right in a very, in a box that's two armies, or two armies, and not even from the box, from the Bibayn Shnei Akarubim, from the very, and you're going to be able to hear the Abish's voice. So how's that possible? Asma who's in, comes in a mamish, and a klisha, a and a limited, limited, limited. Yeah, because that, that's, the Abish is not limited. <laughs> to say God cannot come in limitation is limiting him. So, uh, so the Abish is above limitation. So God is above limitation as He is in limitation, which is, which is something that a Yid has to strive for. The above limitation in the limitation, and that's the whole concept of Chassidus, that's the whole concept of Teda, that's the whole aspect of our davening, is all the unity of limitation and of, in the above limitation. So Shnei HaKeruvim, Miyatzigim et HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ma? Shnei HaKeruvim, Miyatzigim et HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Ma zi yam Miyatzigim. Miyatzigim. Present. The revelation of God is being shaykh The Torah says so. The Abisha says, I'm going to reveal myself in shnei shaykh rubim. Bami ben shnei shaykh rubim. The Abisha, that's what the Pasuk says. I'm going to reveal myself in ben shnei shaykh rubim. I'm not going to reveal myself in the whole house. I'm going to reveal myself in ben shnei shaykh rubim. That's it, that's it. That's what God says. Ben shnei shaykh rubim. And that's the way, that, that's, why, that's why the first thing that was hidden from the Beis Hamikdash, even the first Beis Hamikdash, was the Kruv, was, was the was the Aron, was the Aron. That's it. It was it was taken away. It was and the Yid in the second Beis Hamikdash didn't have this this is Galus of Alakus didn't have this revelation of Atzmos in the second Beis Hamikdash at all. But uh, the Kohen Gadol will go in once only a year. Once a year, will see the Kruvim. So in other words, that place could be Kruvim. seen only from Kohen Gadol. I didn't say that. You're right. Correct. But Moshe Rabbeinu, his relationship with God was me Ben Shnei Akrova. Okay, so you have to be Moshe Rabbeinu. Not every day. Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu had a... I'm not sure. I'm not sure he saw him. He felt him. He heard him. He heard him, but he felt him. He didn't see... No, the Gemara says that they used to open up their order. First of all, Jews didn't go into the base of Mikdash. Forget about the Kurdish Kedoshim. They didn't get into the building. Right? You, yeah. you weren't allowed in the building. You, you, you're you yeah. regular Jew, you were outside the building. Uh, if you were a Koyin, you also didn't just go into the building. That's right. You, you got into the it's building when you, when, you, when, you were, when you were chosen to go into the building. Yeah. And even you were a Koyin, you didn't go to Kodesh Kedoshim, you had to be a Koyin Gadol. And even a Koyin Gadol, you went once a year into, once a, once a year into the, bil, in, into the Kodesh Kedoshim. But, the Gemara says, that they opened up the doors of the Beis Hamikdash and they opened up the curtain of the Beis Hamikdash on Yom Kippur, so that they, that all Jews should be able to see into the Beis Hamikdash, into the Kodesh Kodesh. They should have a a, 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 a vision, a vision of 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 the of the of the of the of the, of the Arun. They should be able to see the 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 the. the, the what did they see? They saw the Arun. They saw the what they, they saw. Oh, saw the oh yeah, right. They didn't. They didn't. They're not capable. Those who were capable. Oh. Those who were capable to see. This expression, the Yiddish word, "Divas villain head and head." Divas villain zen zen. It's what you want to hear, what you want to see. It's the vessel that you're capable. If you cannot capable see, you're not capable of seeing. If you're capable of seeing, you're capable of seeing. You know, the Gemara says, that, uh, the Torah says that they, by Yad Hashem Kisar that, the, that there was the burning bush, which was one of the, which is, the burning bush is also one of the revelations of God in the world. It's like the other, the burning bush, because it says it was burning, but it wasn't burning, which is the concept of these two opposites. That it was burning, but it was, so it says that by Yad Hashem Kisar Lirais. The Gemara says many people saw it. Many people saw this burning bush. Nobody looked at it. Moshe Rabbeinu, when the Abish says, when the Torah says that he turned around to see. Look at the pasuk. The pasuk of Yad Hashem Kisar Lirais. When the Abish saw Moshe Rabbeinu pass the burning bush, 
And he, there wasn't like anybody else that just walked by. A burning bush, a fire. Right, they get fun. No, what should I do? There's a fire in the desert. You know, call the, call the fire. Great. Uh, he walked by. But Mesha Ben is so, wow, this is not some, this is not, this is not burning. This is something else. This is a, this is, this is a Gilu Yilam I'm getting a, Vayar Hashem Kisar Lidais. When the Torah says that, when the Ebesh saw Mesha Rabbeinu turned around to look, Vayikra, he called him. And the Gemara says, many people passed this bush. It was not to stop burning suddenly when, when Mesha Rabbeinu passed it. It was a burning bush. Could have been burning for years. Could have been hundreds and thousands of people. Passed by it and nobody looked at it. Only he stopped. Why did they, why, what is that, what's the Baal Shem to say? What's the lesson? You could be walking by a burning bush every day. Nobody cares. The Abish is showing something to people, maybe every day. Everybody's just driving by and nobody cares. A Yid has to be like Moshe Rabbein. He has to stop a second. He has to stop a second. If you want to see it, you're going to see something. If you want to hear something, you're going to hear something. If not, you just pass it like anybody else. You just go by the situation, and it won't talk to you. You'll like you'll be like any other person. And it's not make, it doesn't make you a bad person, but ultimately you want to be Meishra Beinu. You want to be able to stop and see. You want to be able to see Gatlkeit. You don't want to go through life in Oedis and Kalim. It's wonderful to live a life in Oedis and Kalim, but that's not the Avayda of Yid. The Avayda of Yid is the goal of Meilam and Kalim. The way that he used to go above himself, to break the vessels, to reach up higher, to connect to a higher situation. So you can collect, and now you can, in essence, it happens, it says, you can connect to Eide Ein Seif, which is also unbelievable. Eide and Kalim is unbelievable. Eide Ein Seif is even more unbelievable. But we're not looking for that. We're looking for something higher. We're looking for the Abishta, God Himself. We're looking to break all boundaries, to go even above it ain't safe, infinity. We're looking the, for the Abish to himself. That's why you say Baruch Atah Hashem. What's Atah? You should say Baruch Hashem. Right? We say Baruch Atah. Who's Atah? Blessed are you. Who is the you? You is above Hash Yud Kei The Atah, which I can't even say what it is. Yud Kei Vav is is Oyrein Seif is Hoya Hoya V'Yir Kiyecha which is infinity. Baruch Atah, blessed are you, is before the Havaya. Baruch Atah Hashem Elekeinu. So with those three words, Atah Hashem Elekeinu, you have these three things. Atah is Atzmus. Yud Kei Vav is Oyrein Seif. Elekeinu. Is Eir of Amala, is the way the Eir comes to the Amala. Baruch Atah Hashem Alekeinu, Melech. How all these three things come into a Malchus, comes into the world. Melech Oilam. And that's every bracha. Baruch Atah Hashem Alekeinu, Melech Oilam. Every bracha starts off with that. Because that's the, the, the process. Baruch, blessed Atah is you. Who are you? You are above, less than you, has no name. Is that because his essence is into everything? His essence is, yes. So if you're blessing Adama. It's Atah, Atah you. That you. What are you, I, what are you, I don't know. I can't give you a name. You, that's what, Atah uh, Tetzav, that's what uh, that's the, the Rebbe says, Atah Tetzav, the Pasha, you don't have the Moshe Rabbeinu's name. Atah, you. Right, you, Moshe. Uh, your name is Moshe. Uh, but then this, your name is Moshe. Who, what are you? You, you're Moshe, you, you are, you are, you are, you are you. Uh, what you are, uh, you are, go find that out. But, but, but a name is already a, uh, what, what do we give a person a name for? Because uh, you're both Moshe. Uh, now I don't know who's Moshe. Moshe, who Moshe is, I have to add another name. I have to have Moshe Ben Avram, Moshe Ben Ruben. I got to add other names. Imagine if you had both Moshe Ben Ruben, I really get mixed up. So we have to add a family name. Uh, you know, I got to add another name. Because I have to get another identification. Right? But Moshe is already identification. Atta, you, is the Milam identification. Is your, is, is your essence. Has no identification. It's you. What? It could be a lot of things. You are a lot of things, right? You are more than dust, uh, Moshe. Yeah. You, you're greater than that. You, 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 you're unbelievable. You're Moshe's limitation. I'm limited into, into a name. Rabbi, so every bracha is like a letter? 
Yeah, 100%. Hatuch, hatuch, Hashem, Malekeinu, Melech, Ha'ilam. Every bracha starts with that. Every bracha starts. Say bracha sa mitzvah, say bracha sa teda. Say bracha sa nenen. Starts with Baruch, hatuch, Hashem, Malekeinu, Melech, Ha'ilam. How are you going to the next level? Beit Zalech, Benar, it's a, you know, I'll shake it in Shadim, it's a mitzvah, it's a mitzvah, it's a mitzvah. But that's the concept. The concept is this level. You have to, you start from Atzimus, it comes into Eid and Seif, it comes into Mamala Klaun, which comes into the world. Melech Ha'ilam comes through Malchus into the world. So you have one Tzimtzum, you have another Tzimtzum, you have one conjunction, you have another conjunction. But what's the essence? It's Atta. You. Let's, you know, you. Who is you? I don't know who you. Modani Lefanecha. Lefanecha is before you, above you. So why don't we say... Instead of Baruch Hashem, we could say Baruch Atah Hashem. It's higher. Baruch Atah, we do say Baruch Atah Hashem. No, no. If I want to say Baruch Hashem, you said to me, Mashlam Chayim, Baruch Hashem. I should say Baruch Atah Hashem. No, you say to the person Baruch Atah Hashem. No, 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 no. I don't say Baruch Hashem to you. Baruch Hashem, thank God. When you tell me, how are you? I say Baruch Hashem. No, but you say Baruch Atah Hashem. I said I could. Okay. Yes, you know I mean? that's an expression. You I don't know. I, 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 okay, that's I an expression. That's, that's an expression. You the same thing. You same thing. The first commandment. Anoichi, Hashem, Elakecha. Anoichi is what is Anoichi? Misha Anoichi. We say Anoichi. I. Who am I? Mish. So the Gemara says, Who is? Who, what means Anoichi? I. Misha Anoichi. I am. I am who I am. Eyeshayeya. I am who I am. What am I? I can't tell you what I am. I am who I am. Achshem alekecha. Yud kei vafke is seiv kolamim. Ain't seiv alekecha is malaklam. So you have the three things. Neichi Hashem alekecha. Right? The Rebbe says in Shema. That's also you have the two names of Avaya. You have two names of Avaya. Shema Yisrael Hashem alekein Hashem. That's the same thing. You have the Avaya. Yud kei vafke yulam alamayle. That the Eren seiv. I mean, Atmos, Hashem Alekecha, is the way it comes in Malon Seba Klamo. You have these three things in everything. You can find uh, uh, these three things in everything in, in, in Yiddish Kaddim Teda. These three concepts. So a Yid can, a yid can sure, or should surely have Eidam Amala Kalama, should bring down, do a mitzvah. You have to do a mitzvah. That's Eidam Amala. You cannot get away with that. You have to bring God into a vessel. That's your obligation. And that's Eidam Amala. Doing a mitzvah is bringing the Abish into a physical. That's beautiful. But then you've got to go higher. You've got to reveal the godliness in, 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 in this mitzvah. The Eirin Saif. The Eirin Saif, the infinite light in this mitzvah. And that is, by, by, by connecting the Eirin Saif, that takes a little more, more than just doing the mitzvah. That takes the union of, 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 of connecting that connection. That, that, that's when I have kavana. That I'm trying to do that unity. It's not the stam. I'm just doing a mitzvah. I'm doing a mitzvah because I'm trying to connect to Kodesh Baruch Hu. I can do a mitzvah because I enjoy it. I enjoy doing mitzvah. Yeah, cool. I have enjoyment. No, I'm trying to say, I'm doing the mitzvah because it's a command by God. Uh, it's a command by Eir and Seif. And then, the, then it comes even another higher level. And that is, I'm not even trying to go to Eir Seif. I'm trying to go to Atmos. I'm trying to go to Meidani Lefanecha. I'm trying to go higher than that. I'm trying to read Atmos in Mahusay. I'm trying to connect to the essence of God. And that's Moshe Rabbeinu. The truth is, the truth is, like I said on Sunday, the journey of Am Yisrael, of the journey of, of Bereshis and, and, and Shemais, is all a journey to Moshe Rabbeinu. It's all a journey to Moshe Rabbeinu. Right? We're, we're not trying to get stuck with, with Avram Mitzayankiv. We're trying to go to Moshe Rabbeinu. Right? We're trying to Moshe Rabbeinu. Avram Mitzayankiv only reached what a human being can reach. Moshe Rabbeinu reached higher than what a human being can reach. And that's, we, 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 sure, Moshe Rabbeinu, sure. Moshe Rabbeinu, Panei al Panei, no, that's wonderful. But Moshe Rabbeinu spoke to the Abish to, to part him upon him. And no, not Avraham Avinu could do the not Yitzhak and Yalak, Yaakov Avinu do the, only Moshe Rabbeinu. Our journey is to Moshe Rabbeinu. And, and, and the, the proof is, because even Avraham Yitzhak Yankiv, how do you know about it? Through Moshe Rabbeinu. Without Moshe Rabbeinu, you don't have Avraham Yitzhak Yankiv. You have Avraham Yitzhak Yankiv because of Moshe Rabbeinu. 
It's everything from Moshe Rabbeinu. I mean, they, existed. Moshe, they existed. They existed, but you would not know, know uh, of Avram, Yitzhak, Yaakov, Avinu without Moshe Rabbeinu. Finished. There's nothing, there's nothing in the world without Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, so who came first? Avram or Moshe? In, 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 in time, uh, Avram yeah, came first, but in purpose, Moshe Rabbeinu. That's it. So we... That's right. Moshe yeah, Kibam is Yeah, but you, you don't know you don't know anything about Moshe Rabbeinu. Correct. That's it. Moshe Rabbeinu. So that's why. That's it. Where does our journey start from? Jewish people's journey starts from Mat and Torah. That's where our journey starts from. Mat and Torah. Where does the purpose of our journey start from? So our purpose of our journey starts from. From Avraham Avinu, self-understood. <laughs> but where does our journey start from? Everything starts from Meshach Rabbeinu. Meshach Kibbul Teda Messinai, Umasara. He gave it to Am Yisrael. He gave the Teda. We know Avraham Avinu, we know Yitzhak, we know Yaakov, we understand their purpose. All because of Meshach Rabbeinu. If there was no Meshach Rabbeinu, you wouldn't have anything. So why Meshach Rabbeinu is not on the Amidah? And only on the Amidah. <laughs> Very good question. Very good That's question. a good Very question. Very good question. Because no question about that. Avram Yitzhak Yankiv is because because the Avoda of Tefillah is Avram Yitzhak Yankiv. Yeah, the Avoda of Tefillah. Moshe Rabbeinu is in the Chumash. But Avoda of Tefillah because Tefillah is Avram Yitzhak Yankiv. Avoda Shabbalev is Avram Yitzhak Yankiv. The truth is Avoda of a Yid is to 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 is to to journey to to the Seichel. We journey through the Avoda Shabbalev to the Seichel to the ultimate through to come to Seichel. To come to our relation to God through understanding, but it needs to go through the the the, the emotions. That's the Avas Hashem, Yiras Hashem. So there has to be the Veda of Rami to the Veda of the service of the. So you need to rectify your 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 your, your attributes, your ca your character before you can receive the Torah. Truth is, you cannot receive the Torah if you don't go through Avram to Yankiv, which is the rectification of the Midas. That's why Avram to Yankiv is Chesed Gevura Tiferes, the Aveda of the Midas. And then you can reach Meishe Rabbeinu. If you, if you can rectify yourself first, then how can you receive the Torah? Right? You can't receive the Torah if you're not able to rectify your Midas. And that's Avram Mitzvah Yank. So you need to do that. Rabbeinu, is there a reason why we can see Moshe Rabbeinu's place? We can see Moshe We cannot see. Let's say Avram, we know it's a marathon machta. Yeah. That, that Moshe saw so hidden. Moshe is on Shabbat. There's many reasons, there's many reasons given to that, to why Moshe Rabbeinu's place, Moshe Rabbeinu's place is not to see. But also could be a chassidist, because Moshe Rabbeinu was, uh, so that was Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu felt bad that he didn't have, uh, he didn't have uh, children that followed in his ways. Didn't become leaders. Moshe Rabbeinu said, it's not right, Avram had Yitzhak, Yitzhak had Yaakov, uh, and me, I have Yeshua. Yeshua is wonderful. But he's, uh, he's, he's not, he's not, he's not my, my kid. No, the Abish said, no, you're greater. All Yidin are your kids. I'm going to give you a better Yerusha. Like your Yerusha is to every single Jew. Not only to the Jews of your generation. Your Yerusha is to every single Jew of every single, uh, uh, throughout history. You are going to inherit them something that, 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 that yeah, so you're, you're worried about inheriting two children. Exactly. Then they'll think that Tate is only inherited to your children. No, Tate is an inheritance to every single Yid. So every single Jew is your child. And that's why it says, Kola Malamde, Menchaveri Tate, Akila Yolde, whoever learns with somebody else, Tate is if you is your child. And that was Meshra Rabbeinu. So we're joining to Moshe Rabbeinu. Is, is, is Moshe Rabbeinu is really upset about that he's uh, Lazar and Gershon? The Gemara says, what do you want to have? Yeah, yeah. Every, every father said, wants his child. He was mentioned in the Chumash? Yeah, it says. Yeah. It says. That's what the Gemara says. Moshe Rabbeinu was, was, uh, was upset. Is he was upset. He was upset. Every father wants his kid to be, right. Uh, right. To be uh, like him. Right. And uh, the Abish says, you're right. I'm going to give you better than your kid. I'm going to give you every, every, that's what the Adizal says, every year there's a mitzvah of Meshul Rabbeinu. Every Jew has a spark of Meshul Rabbeinu in him. So it's, uh, yeah. No, that we don't mention Moshe in the weekday, I mean, but in Shabbat, which is higher, it's mentioned Moshe and Adav. Truth is, we mention Meshul Rabbeinu and Adav every day. 
Oz Yosha Moshe. By Yemina by Shem of Moshe Avde. Don't worry. He's, uh, I don't think Moshe is, is, is lacking mentioned in, in, the ta- in, in the davening. And he's mentioned, the, the truth is, the whole davening is Moshe Rabbeinu. Okay, you don't have davening, you, you don't have prayer without Moshe Rabbeinu. Finished. Nothing you have. Ein chad, that's what the Gemara says. Ein chadosh tachaz ha-shemesh. Moshe Rabbeinu is shemesh. Ein chadosh tachaz ha-shemesh. There's nothing new under Moshe Rabbeinu. Kol mashev talmud vasik l'chadish. Anything that somebody will expound upon from the time of Matan Torah until today, Hakol Nitan Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu already brought it down to Mount Sinai. There is nothing in the Torah from the time of Matan Torah till today, if not Moshe Rabbeinu. End of story. That's it. So uh, davening, Mogan Avram, one word. You, uh, the whole davening is because of Moshe Rabbeinu. The whole, the whole components is because of Moshe Rabbeinu. The whole, everything is Moshe Rabbeinu. It starts from him and ends by him. It's, it's him. The Gemara says a story that Moshe Rabbeinu was, was once in Gan Eden. He was traveling and he came, to a, he came to a class of Rabbi Akiva. Came to Rabbi Akiva's class. And Rabbi Akiva was giving a class. Rabbi Akiva was a very deep guy. You know, Rabbi Akiva, the famous sage. He was a very deep individual. He was, he, Rabbi Akiva was expounded on even the crowns of the Torah. You know, you'll see in the Torah, you'll see that there's crowns. Mm-hmm. And Rabbi Akiva yeah. learned halachas and why there's certain crowns in certain places. So he, was give, he, was, he sat down to a class. Rabbi Akiva was giving a class. He sat down to a class. And Chol Shadaita, the Gemara says, he felt like he, he didn't understand what he was talking about. He didn't understand what the Rabbi Akiva, he didn't understand what he was talking about. The Pasha didn't understand what he was talking about. So he felt, what? Well, Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu. Yeah. He didn't understand what he was talking about. The Pasha didn't understand. He was expounding on the Torah. He didn't what he was talking about. He felt like, he felt like what am I? Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a kindergarten. I don't know what the guy's talking about. Chol Shaddai. He said, wow, I, I pushed it. I, I, the guy is talking to Torah. I, I don't know what he's talking about. So, so, so the Ebishter felt that. So suddenly there was a stage that said, a student started to argue with Rabbi Akiva. Started to argue with him. And they were arguing. And he pushed him. He pushed him. He pushed him. And Rabbi Akiva said, OK, enough is enough. Halacha <laughs> l'meisha misinai. Leave me alone. Stop bothering me. That's the way Moshe Rabbeinu said it in the Sinai. Ah, Moshe Rabbeinu said, OK, uh, OK. Now I understood that statement. I understood that statement. And that's why you find in the Gemara, halacha l'meisha misinai. Some things you can argue and argue and argue. And the end is, halach, that's the way Moshe Rabbeinu said it. And that's the way it is. So you can argue from today to tomorrow. That's the way Moshe Rabbeinu says. Allah Chalamesh. It's very interesting. Allah Chalamesh. I mentioned this year. You know, Allah Chalamesh. There are some things that are not even written in the Torah, but Allah Chalamesh is Sinai. It's not written in the Torah, and it's a, it has a deraisa. Has a has a has a law of a deraisa because Allah Chalamesh is Sinai. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu said. Is the darava, the shyness that we hit the thing. It doesn't say the Torah anything like that. But, but it's Allah Chalamesh is Sinai. The Gemara says, that's what Moshe Rabbeinu said on Mount Sinai, and that's what it is. It's like a, it's like a pasuk in the Torah. Can you imagine? How the, Moshe Rabbeinu came down, said something, didn't even write in the Torah. And, the, and that comes halacha like a pasuk in the Torah. Halacha, Tesh Miksav. Right, I said, I love you, you hit a shyness even if it falls on Shabbos. <coughs> Why? Halacha on Moshe Sinai. It has a gedr of halacha on Moshe Sinai. It has a gedr, it has a level of, of the Torah itself. A pasuk in the Torah, so it's it's unbelievable. You understand? So Moshe Rabbeinu is uh, Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't need recognition. The Gemara, you know, the Ramam writes that Moshe Rabbeinu, every other navi needs to have proof. Moshe Rabbeinu doesn't need proof. Every navi needs to show a sign. Even the Torah says, if you want to bring Yatav, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't show any signs. Moshe Ames for Teiras Ames. Moshe is a whole different uh, reality. It's a whole different. They come navi kisok Moshe. Uh, Moshe, why? Because Moshe Rabbeinu reached the epitome of what this mime is telling us. Moshe Rabbeinu united the heavens and the world, united Atzmus and Husum and Baruch in the world. That was the whole purpose of the whole creation of the world and the whole purpose of Matan Torah. Moshe Rabbeinu accomplished that. Moshe Kibul Torah Mesina Umasara. Moshe Rabbeinu was the ultimate vessel of acceptance and the ultimate vessel of giving. Nobody had that capability. Ishali Kim. Nobody had a capability, Ish and Alakim, to be a, a, a Ish and Alakim, to be a human and Alakim. At the same time, the, the connection of godliness and humanity to be, uh, uh, to be in such a uni, unison was only Moshe Rabbeinu. 
Avram Yitzhak were also unbelievable people and unbelievable spiritual people, but they were ultimately limited to Avram and Chesed and Yitzhak and Gevura and, 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 and Yaakov and Teferes. Moshe Rabbeinu broke all boundaries. He broke all protocols. He broke everything. He brought about the unity of, of heavens and earth, which was, as the Rebbe says, the Avram Yitzhak started the purpose, seven levels, the 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 Abish to oh, Yivay, seven levels the Abish to uh, moved away from the world seven levels from Avram Avinu Moshe Rabbeinu ultimately brought down to the world.